I'm uh, Jennifer Walker. I'll be your instructor uh, for the seminar or workshop today. Uh, happy to have you all here with me. Um, we'll be fairly informal. Uh, you can feel free to ask questions as we go along. And we're going to be pretty heavy on um, the hands-on uh, exercises, although I will start with some lecture. Um, so uh, my background is in water resources, hydrology, hydraulics, um, uh, water conservation, water supply, green infrastructure. Uh, my company, Water, focuses solely on uh, water resources uh, and environmental um, type work. Um, we do um, low impact development modeling on a very large percentage um, of our projects. Um, so I'm pleased and happy to be able to show that with you today. Okay, I'll, I'll go through a few slides and then I'll demonstrate the model for those of you who aren't familiar with SWIM and then we'll pretty quickly go into our first hands-on workshops. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the bioretention component since a lot of you are familiar with it, um, but if you have questions as you're working on hands-on workshops, I can kind of answer um, questions individually. You know, the benefits of low-impact development, it's more of a multifunctional tool. Um, in areas with you know, significant uh, rainfall events, it may not take the place of um, a centralized flood control facility completely, but the idea is it helps with water quality, it can bring down the size of the storm drain system, and it might um, reduce the size of your centralized flood control facility. For those of you who are more in um, more arid environments or, or the drier part of the state, you might be able to use storm water bulbs um, just with low impact development. But for those of you who are in, you know, Central Texas, North Texas, um, the Gulf Coast, you know, you're probably still going to need uh, a detention component. So it can help with stream erosion and hydro modification um, management, just in terms of addressing the excess uh, runoff volume. So anytime they develop, we have more uh, runoff volume than in undeveloped condition. So detention does a great job of meeting um, flows, at least for the events that we actually analyze, but it doesn't address the excess runoff volume. So that excess runoff volume um, can contribute to uh, erosion issues. And then just really uh, briefly, so fire retention, we've got a um, surface storage layer, we have a growing media layer, uh, and we have a drain rock layer. This particular graphic doesn't have one, but if you have type C or D, but clayish soils, low saturated hydraulic conductivity rates or infiltration, you're going to have an underdrain. And so when we work with SWIM, we'll be putting all of these components uh, within uh, the SWIM model. And um, then just um, more uh, graphically, you know, again, uh, we can represent the plants within the model as well uh, with, a, with a coefficient. Um, but generally, unless it's very densely planted, uh, we may or may not use that coefficient. If it's densely planted, then you'll, you'll tend to want to use it. All right, so again, type C or D soils, we're going to use an underdrain. Um, and SWIM has the capability to model that. Uh, here's just an example of a uh, rain garden in um, Louisville, uh, Kentucky. I think they're 100 year events, like nine inches. Um, so not too different from the, what a lot of you are used to. Uh, right after it was built, and then a couple weeks later, they had a 100 year event. And it basically just filled up, drained out, just like expected. You'll notice um, fairly fast flowing water um, coming out of the Yellowstone or Scupper. Uh, so when, when that, those types of flows are directed to biomass engine, um, we need erosion control uh, or energy um, dissipation just so that not eroding at all. We're just going to zoom past some of this. Here's a, an example in, uh, this is in Northern Virginia um, at a, a consulting firm. We have, of course, uh, asphalt on parking stalls, and then the parking lot overflows into a centralized fire retention area. Um, Pre-treatment can be helpful for erosion control. It's not 100% required. Like if you use bioretention and you have mulch, the mulch serves as a pre-treatment layer, trapping sediment uh, and other um, pollutants. Uh, but if you um, have space um, to put in pre-treatment, it can sometimes consolidate um, some of the maintenance requirements. Um, filter fabric fence. This one's kind of important. Filter fabric fence below the growing media 
uh, can kind of thin the fog. Uh, so we want to be careful with that and make sure uh, you've got good geotechnical recommendations on using the um, filter fabric fence versus like a smaller graded uh, rock. These slides are just on internal storage zones, which is a little bit of a design modification to uh, force more storage and uh, bioretention that needs under drains. It, it requires um, certain depths, specifically some anaerobic conditions for denitrification, uh, but it can help with nitrate removal. Uh, so we see good water quality performance from bioretention, uh, total system in solids, uh, metals, uh, pathogenic bacteria. Nutrients can be uh, a little bit um, variable depending on underlying soils uh, and what is in the early media as well as the loads into the system. So if nutrients are a concern, you want to make sure and look at your design um, specs pretty closely and then also you may or may not need an additional uh, treatment being. So bioretention in terms of water quality is one of the better BMPs, or at least the um, landscape or LIV-based BMPs, because it has physical filtration um, characteristics, it has chemical removal, and it also has biological removal, both biodegradation and um, bioremediation, um, if you will. And then the plants um, provide further kind of remediation. Um, 18 inches is usually kind of a good minimum rule of thumb for growing media. Um, one of the reasons bioretention tends to perform really well is that even in um, clay soils, you will have some retention of water within the system. You'll have removal by evapotranspiration, and that re reduces the volume leaving the system or reaching the receiving system. And so that alone um, keeps pollutants out of the waterway. Okay, so again, we looked at the various um, layers. There's a surface storage layer, a growing media layer, um, the drain rock layer, which um, is now called the storage layer, and then lots of the other layers. Um, why is SWIM used? Well, it's, it's a free, readily available model, and it has pretty good LID um, components built into it. And so it models these processes of rainfall. I showed you run on, which is overflow into the LID. Uh, overflow out of evapotranspiration, uh, if you're so inclined to include that, and then the various layers as well as the infiltration that occurs. So you can dig into the detailed results and find out your discharge rate through the underdrain and then also the overflow um, that's occurring. All right, so we looked at the hydrology data um, goes in um, similarly to other models like HMLs. Uh, time series data is where you put your rainfall gauge data. Uh, and your rainfall gauge may not be an actual gauge from the field that's measured. It may just be um, like your high um, that you're using. Or your cumulative uh, depth. Okay, so for the LID modeling, it's the rainfall runoff. Again, you can model water quality, but that's separate from the LID controls. It requires a few more components to go into modeling and a lot more um, data in terms of parameters. And you can use other infiltration methods like the curve number, but I, I probably should point out it's not really um, the best method to use either for urban or for um, LID type systems. So it was initially developed more for rural or agricultural areas and uh, tends to not be as accurate. There's, there's quite, actually quite a few um, papers out there that talk about some of the drawbacks of it. But, now, if that's what your local requirements require you to use, you can certainly use it. But when you get into the LID features themselves and you start putting in um, data for the um, native soil or the voting media, it would be better to use for your parameters, even if you use the number of or the sub area runoff. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up um, SWIM and we'll go through um, a demonstration of it.